So, sorry for the delay. See, what happened was, on Monday, I was chased by some odd detective guy. He shoved some paper in my mouth and that thing had me going wacky. I had an odd fever and I just ate. What did I eat? Carbs. A metric ton of carbs. Now, if you know anything about me, I don't eat carbs. So what happened next was an explosion of the back end. And after five days of destroying my house's pipes, the paper finally exited my system. Nah, see, I like telling jokes on this channel, but seriously, it's been two years of this thing going on in the world, and it's not over yet. So, as someone who's dealt with it once, and currently dealing with it a second time, take care of yourselves, everybody. And with that being said, let's go ahead and get on with this review. Okay, so maybe I overhyped myself going into this episode. After all, after that banger of a Revice episode, the hype and expectations were through the roof. How'd that lead into Dom Brothers 18? Let's see. When we last left off, we see a tube somewhere within Noto space give rise to the mysterious Don Murasame. Being called out by his mother to escape, he transforms into a blade and wrecks all kinds of Minecraft blocks along the way. Brief Sinoni cameo until finally making its way to the human world, where he lay dormant. Back at the cafe, Dark Haired Taro is confronted by the rest of his companions regarding Jiro's lack of team synergy. His mood swings and constant swap between motive just doesn't sit well between them all. Taro, on the other hand, sees use for Jiro and shuts everyone down on the matter since their hierarchy is lesser than his. That evening, Taro meets with Jiro who has issues with just being a companion. He wants to be Taro's equal, which intrigues him. Citing Musashi Miyamoto, he challenges him in a game of hit me if you can. If Jiro can land a hit on Toro, he will see him as an equal. Here comes the shenanigans! Oh yeah, by the way, it's raining again, so if you hear a lot of background sound, it's once again raining here. With each of these challenges, every failed attempt, Toro commands some sort of exercise as punishment. First, he tries the UFO technique, which Black Kaito fully falls for. Toro, however, not. 100 push-ups. A sneak up while Toro's working? DENIED! Jump rope 1000 times! Tsuyoshi so witnesses the second outing, and the rest of the clan show up, interested in partaking in the equality measure. They psych themselves up on the idea of getting one in on Taro. Meanwhile, Sunoni's thighs... Sometimes you gotta get the big jug out for those things. Shows up to the park bench of Napping Tsubasa! Honoring the bet from the previous episode, she acknowledges that he was the victor, so she can grant him anything he wants. Anything? Tsubasa doesn't claim victory, however, as it was love that triumphed at the end. Sunoni ain't about that answer, and offers just to take him to Natsumi. He doesn't take the bait and decides to just take the long way to her. She's gonna get jealous, isn't she? Back to the shenanigans. Next up is Tsuyoshi, following Taro into a restaurant. He figures that if he can snag a sprout from Taro's bowl, he wins. <laughs> can we just acknowledge how funny Taro's emoting is in this scene? He is definitely hamming it up. That's gonna end up becoming a Twitch emote for me, most definitely. The reality of things don't play out as well for him and is commanded to do 200 step-ups. Shinichi's turn now with a nerf gun looking thing that is actually a paintball gun. His shot lands straight into a pot lid, just for Tara to throw it right back at him. 100 reps of the stairs for you. Finally, Haruka Scheming is a box that supposedly has cookies in it, but will actually be a punch in the face for our Peach Man. Things don't go right as planned as Taro actually is very appreciative for the gift, having never been given something from the heart. Feeling guilty, she tries to take it all back only to get face fisted herself. Solid Snake cosplayer Jiro then shows up to try and take advantage of the situation with another L on his board, 
both are given 100 sit-ups. Y'all, everyone is gonna end up swole by the end of this episode, I swear. Later on, that's when the boyfriend shows up, ready to actually give Taro the pounding he desires. Oh, not like that? They just want to see who can help out the most amount of people? I mean, they're not just gonna help themselves to each... Never mind. Sonoi shadows Taro, finding who can help who first. Of course, his fashion sense does seem to draw some attention, but he is the reason why fashion models don't wear what they wear on the runway just down the street. They proceed to various acts of kindness as the tension between the two reaches max edging. They share a ride together back to his work, only for the clan to try and get the drop on Taro. Sonoi this time being the one to deflect the blows for him, punishment is 500 squats. Finding out that Taro is already getting his feathers ruffled by his companions before he came, makes him feel some kind of way and he decides to just leave the scene. That man jealous. While all this happens, the sleeping blade awakens, absorbing massive amounts of energy along the way. Seeking advice from Jin regarding getting the win on Taro, which I don't know why they don't just ask him for his weakness like Sanoi did, but that's because they are collectively much more dumber than the Noto. Smooth brain energy. Gotta have no wrinkles on that thing. Jin suggests why not tell him Gi the Kabuto is back. Who's Gi? The only friend Taro had as a child. That flew away and never returned. The plan ultimately works, as Taro desperately tries reuniting with his long gone friend. With the bait taken, they spring for the kill, only to feel guilty about it and pull out at the last second. And they just have to explain themselves. It's time. The moment is here. Don Murasame has arrived. Gamurasame, do to do to gonna get you do to do to do, purple shark boy, do to do to do, deepest lore. Rocking their sword like a guitar and moving through land as if sea, this predator gives the Dombros a run for their money. Standing on equal grounds with Don Momo, who has no idea just who or what Don Murasame even is. At the command of his mother, he transforms into alter mode without the need of any gears. With the other Don joining in, we get damn ball senki levels of fighting going on. Taking the fight to the air and then the sea, we get ridiculous CG action. That is until Murasame decides to leave. Sonoi is taken aback by their arrival and puts their matchup on hold. Later, we get introduced to the real equal to Taro. Introducing Don Kane of Bachan. With this episode, we get introduced to Don Murasame, the true evil sentai of the season. With that, let's talk forms. A lot of this suit is really just a negative version of Taro's Don Momo suit. Wait, negative? Nega? Nega Taro? Deno? It just won't stop! It's even just a purple repaint. Why did I just not catch this until now? So it's an actual retool of Don Momo's suit, but it's very nicely done though. As with the shark motif, the headpiece resembles a ninja headband that features a shark on the head as the visor represents the crashing waves. It's literally a Jaws attack situation. The spray painted logo on the chest, which on the outset kind of reminds me of a certain long gone common Rider, also reminds me of the spray paint art that you would see in surf shops in the 90s. It's the Shinobi of 2022, just in the wrong franchise. It's honestly an okay design. It doesn't really move the needle for me though. The thing is, this debut was kind of weak. It comes at the tail end of the episode, but it does nothing to properly move the needle along with the plot line of the show. Although there is a bit of curiosity, this episode just reaffirms how the team is growing to understand Taro. So with that being said, this episode is just going to be getting another B. They keep doing these goofy antics going on between the Don brothers, trying to have Taro see them as equals only to keep realizing that they won't be, and that should be fine. It's a tune that's getting a little bit all too familiar for me. It's funny that they categorize the Noto as villains, as they really aren't. 
We see that with Sonoe's romance with Taro, and now Sononi's dynamic with Tsubasa. They all really just want to help humans. They just want to prevent their desires from manifesting into something a little bit more toxic. The understanding dynamic between them all really could serve as a heel turn for these characters, as they fully join the good side later on. The mystery of this episode really is Dam Murasame. The voice that guides him, which he refers to as mother, do they function like the higher council of the Noto? Being someone that exists within this higher realm, that is the Noto world, what is his relationship with the Don clan? Is he a captured member who's been modified as a servant to whatever this mother is? Also, the fact that they've got a gear holder on their belt but use no gears to change? That's a little interesting. There's a lot of curiosity here, but I feel that it will likely take anywhere from 3 to 5 episodes before we get anything major regarding this character. It's just funny that we still have no idea who or what the main villain is at this point in time of this show. Anyway, what are your thoughts on this week's Don Brothers, the goofy antics to hit Taro, Don Murasame's first appearance, and Sunoni's fashion sense? Next week, we get Evil Knievel Black Kaito. I have no idea what's even going on over here. Anyway, I need to continue staying hydrated, get some rest, and hopefully get this review out before the next episode comes out. So until next time, bear with me. I'm trying. Bye.